Welcome back. So for our next stop on our journey, we're gonna talk about specialty pharmacies. I had the chance to visit a number of specialty pharmacies across this country. And what I saw was remarkable. A specialty pharmacy is nothing like what you see at your neighborhood pharmacy. The amount of effort, the amount of investment, the amount of passion those pharmacies have for their patients, whether it's clinical care, not just dispensing the information, but supporting that patient with their disease, whether it's through the economic implications of that specialty medications, helping with, patient, with medication affordability, or whether it's the social aspects, things that aren't necessarily directly related to the clinical parts, but that patient's life and living with the disease. It's, it is truly remarkable, and I was blown away with what I saw. At the same time, those pharmacies are making enormous investments to understand and manage the administrative burdens associated with specialty medications. So we're gonna start this session with a little poll, with a short poll, so let's bring that up. Here's the question, how much has the administrative burden for those specialty pharmacies risen over the past five years? You know, just take a guess. All right, give us a few more seconds here. Okay, well, I'm actually not gonna tell you the answer yet. 63% um, seems to be the favorite, but also 86%. You're gonna learn about it in the next session. So now I'm pleased to introduce Joel Healy. Joel is the VP of Physician Services for CVS Specialty, the Division of Specialty Health, or Division of CVS Health and he will provide a unique insight into the world of specialty pharmacies. Joel? Hi there, thank you so much uh, for the introduction. And I'm Joel Helley from CVS Health. And, you know, I've been with the organization for 25 years and the last, I guess, 11 in specialty. And, you know, during that time, as I'm sure everybody knows, there's been significant growth. I think we were around $8 billion when I first came over. And this past year, in 2020, we were. 52 billion, you know, so there's been just so much growth. And as everybody knows, you know, sort of getting started on a specialty drug can be very difficult uh, for patients, for doctors, for everybody with a team. And, you know, we've been making lots of changes over the time as we see this growth and we understand payers, you know, have this balance between sort of affordability and accessibility that they're all having to deal with. And so they put in different levers to try to manage that accessibility and affordability. What our team does, we have prescriber account teams that are out in doctor's offices across the country. And, you know, they're really trying to help these patients, appropriate patients, get started on a specialty um, medication. And that can start with the prescribers. So the, especially the larger prescribers where we would be in the office uh, physically or on the phone or both. We're also talking to patients. Uh, patients need a lot of support around copay support, foundation support, you know, portability within specialty can really be an issue. And depending who the patient is, you know, copay cards might not be available. And the copay might be really high, or they might have a type of a plan that doesn't allow copay cards, like in the MedD space. And we could help also there to help reach out to the foundations for those to get support. The past few years has been really exciting with digital innovation. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but I think this is really the key to making specialty 
um, simpler for appropriate patients and getting rid of the facts. And, you know, the days of 50 page faxes needs to go away. <clears throat> and in fact, some of the companies that we've talked to are always so surprised when we mention facts. And some of the younger kids that, you know, recently graduated goes, what's a fax? But in healthcare, there's still such a big deal around faxing in. This digital innovation that I'll talk about has really changed the landscape of specialty. And I would expect over time, we'll see that more and more and more and more. And we also want to work, you know, cross-functional across all those different people and all the different teams to look for opportunities to help support and get the patient on the medication and stay on the medication. And as you, I think most people know, it's very fragmented. You go to primary care who doesn't necessarily know who the specialist office, uh, what they're doing or what they're putting you on. The pharmacy doesn't necessarily have all the information. Someone may go into urgent care for a specific need, especially in rare disease. And the ER often ends up a place that people are using um, to get care. And that view of the medical history can often be difficult and was often invisible to the pharmacy. And that's changed. That's changing over time. And I would expect um, it, it to get better over time. And this disconnected system, you know, can really negatively impact the patient. And this complicated getting started this fragmented, you might need some information from the primary care and some from the specialist. <clears throat> and then once you get on the drug, we need to support these patients. And some drugs, especially in specialty, might start fine and then 15 days in, there's a, a well-known side effect that comes up later. And you know, we wanna be able to support those patients to say, hey, if you get this side effect, here's what to do. It shouldn't last, all those type of things. And that care for those patients was not always you know, sort of available. So the biggest, the biggest problem I think is getting people started on the medication. And, you know, traditionally this whole big path here of sending in an Rx and often a came fax with 50 pages, like I mentioned before, we're requesting from the patient information about uh, their, their uh, what kind of insurance they have. We're doing a benefit check to see if we can run the claim right away. Typically, when you run the claim, it'll say a prior authorization required in specialty. The patient's calling in, you know, where's my medication? I can't just walk to a CVS and get it and walk right back out. The PA forms are often sent to the physician. So now the physician is involved with the payer trying to go back and forth to complete the PA, run the claim again. In fact, we run it every day, seeing if anything come, has come back for the payer. Meanwhile, during this process, doctors are waiting, the patient's waiting, so they're continuing to call into the pharmacy, they're calling into the doctor, sometimes to the plan to say, <clears throat> where is it? The PA finally gets approved, right? The pharmacist has to verify it. They call the patient because it's often very important information uh, that needs to uh, be provided to patients who are on specialty drugs, we call that an onboarding call. There might be nursing that's required. Uh, either infused and or injectable first time to get training on how that happens. And then the drug is shipped uh, typically to the patient, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a bit. There's some options there as it relates to CVS specialty. And these numbers you can see down the bottom around 14, you know, 15 hours completing PA requests and, you know, two days just to get the right information in there. And offices over the last five years have seen an 86% increase in this administrative burden. And, you know, that costs money for providers to have all these extra people to do all this, you know, sort of work. And <clears throat> three to nine times providers contacted back and forth, right? So, as you know, nobody picks up their phone in today's world right away. So it's back and forth between patient and with doctor and with the pharmacy to get the information that's being um, asked for by uh, the doctor's office or the payer um, from the pharmacy. And then there's a 76% switch from the original treatment plan when a PA is created for their first choice. Like that's a huge number of patients that would have been, you know, on an appropriate drug that causes, you know, significant challenges um, and issues. So, you know, what does that mean? When you start a new medication, people are used, used to going into the doctor's office and give them the prescription and they say, can you come back in an hour? You know, and I think a lot of people think that's too long to have to wait an hour. With specialty, it traditionally is taking seven to 21 days to get someone started on some of these medications, especially when there's infusion involved or injection training, et cetera. 
and there's 91% of the time there's a, a delay, 40% abandonment from the drug because they just sort of give up either because they think it's going to be too expensive or because of the, the time to get to started on treatment. And we see a 28% increase in life-threatening or serious adverse events due to these delays, which is, you know, just very difficult to, to have to deal with um, uh, over time. And for doctor's offices, you know, can be extremely painful. So this is a super busy slide, but I want to take the time to kind of walk through it because we're enhancing um, this patient onboarding process. And what I mentioned before, technology has really changed the landscape of what we can do here. And we're really trying to find price, uh, provide price transparency to patients. And now in some cases we have access into the EHR to get some of that information that might need, might need to be provided to the doctor's office or to the payer. So today, in this new onboarding process, a doctor can just send in an ERX. And ERXs today, um, you know, are quite different. It comes in right away, and that's sort of the, the tag to say, start working on this. And immediately, that order can be starting to process to pull the information that's required for um, PA submission. And if there's some sort of clarification, sometimes the pharmacy will need to know a weight for a weight-based dosing or other information that's in the EHR that could potentially be pulled um, out of that EHR. I believe, you know, this is an important part because the landscape of connecting doctors, pharmacies, other, um, other institutions, we mentioned before, the specialist to the primary care doctor is getting better. And there's interoperability platforms today that are getting better to be able to see information between the different organizations. And so when a doctor or a pharmacy or a, a hospital needs that information to see, they now can get it quicker, faster, uh, more immediate without having to send all these faxes asking for information back and forth or, you know, these calls that would go on back and forth and back and forth um, to offices, which, you know, uh, led to those delays and people getting started. Uh, members will have a choice to pick up the prescription at any CVS across the country, which is, or have it delivered to their house. That choice is very important because some people live in areas where uh, it's not convenient to leave a $7,000 prescription um, on their front porch and they don't want to do that. And this way they can go to whatever CVS they're closest to, pick it up when, at their convenience. They also don't want to have to wait around for the UPS truck and take time off work. And so they can go again and pick it up at any CBS. If they are going to be home, you could change that anytime and um, pick it up, uh, have it delivered to your home. My son's in college and on a specialty drug. And when he's in college, I send it to the CVS near his, uh, where he lives, because it's not, I just don't want the drug going there. But when he's home, um, I just have it delivered and dropped off on my front porch and it's no problem. And so those are, you know, a, super important part that doesn't sound like a big deal is that ability to have that choice. You know, we also are looking after the patient gets started, we're gonna um, monitor those patients for uh, advanced events. We're going to continue to monitor the patient and talk to the doctor to make sure they get through that sort of starting. Like I mentioned before, it can be hard to get started on a specialty medication um, uh, for so many patients. And then if you, if it's an infusion or there's some kind of injection training that needs to be hap happening, we can, um, you know, make that happen either at the patient's home, they could come to an infusion center if they're near one and get the drug there and infuse it. Infuse it. And that um, practice of marrying all that right up, right? Getting the drug, getting it to the nurse, getting it to, it's from our own um, quorum is what we call it, a group of uh, nurses that we have across the country. And what we saw, you know, during COVID, which was really interesting, is patients for years that have actually uh, gone to an infusion center or gone to the hospital, the hospital saying, we don't, we can't have patients here, you know, during COVID. And so we want to send those patients home. And we saw our nurses during COVID, you know, with full gear on going in to make sure these patients did not miss out on those infusions. Because as you know, in, in specialty, you know, missing infusions can have really, you know, um, bad effects. 
And so I think we were able to keep those infusions going. And we've learned that a lot of those patients that got those infusions back then are now saying, I want to continue to do that, but it was just easier for me. And I actually know my nurse now. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of good things going on there. Um, we also have been doing a lot of new stuff with secure messaging, wearables, and symptom tracking. So it's an important part that I mentioned about before, which is, first of all, you know, ordering something on your cell phone, which everybody does, you know, from Amazon or wherever for everything, was not necessarily real available in specialty pharmacy. Now, anybody can go on to their phone or onto their computer and sign into CVS Specialty. They can order their refills. In specialty, it requires that some additional questions have to be answered every single month. Uh, some have 90 days, but typically it's every 30 day prescription. They need to answer these questions to see if there's been any changes that we would need to notify the doctor about. They can do that right in the app or right on their computer and then send the order. Then again, determine do I want that picked up at uh, sent to home or do I want to pick it up at CVS? They could change that at any time. They also, if they had questions, there's secure messaging right within the app or right within um, the computer where you could ask the pharmacist a question to say, I'm experiencing this. And the pharmacist would get back to you and say, this is what that means. And that's really, really changed significantly specialty pharmacy in a really, really good way because it feels like you can get the information you need all the time. You're not having to call five or six times back and forth where people don't pick up their phone so they would get a message, have to call back in to refill. And it's important that you don't miss doses, right? And adherence is probably the most important thing in specialty. And so once you're on the drug, these wearables as well as the apps will remind you to take your medication every day. And there's a little button that says, I took it. And you can say, you know, I took it so you know that each day you've taken it. And then over time, we can actually see and we could provide back to the doctor how folks are doing and are they taking their medication every day. So if there's some sort of problem that the patient's dealing with, then the good news is <clears throat> that the doctor can look and say, you know, did the patient actually take their medication every day or is it a problem with the drug? And so this sort of reorder process, which we do for so many other things out there is now available in specialty pharmacy and you always would have access through secure messaging or of course a call if people don't have calls if people don't um, want to use the tools they can call into the pharmacy to get that information so super excited about those we also have available now whatever is the closest pharmacy to that patient across the country that we have would be shipped from there uh, it's called you know geo preferencing but it just means that your prescription will get there quicker faster and as we learn through COVID, those things become, you know, very, very important. And payment, you know, becomes another very important thing because they can be super expensive, these drugs. And so we can work through the secure messaging to get information to the patient to say, hey, you have a $3,000 deductible, for example, for a high deductible plan. Here's some support we can get through copay cards and or through foundations if the patient can't afford their medication so that we can make sure that patients get their medication. Very important part uh, of specialty. It is still complex. I do believe that these digital tools are, you know, significantly helping us to uh, help manage these patients. So although this, you know, this uh, one slide is extremely complicated, it's actually so much simpler than it used to be. So, you know, specialty pharmacy, um, like I mentioned, I've been here, you know, 10 years in specialty side, and it's a complicated process. And it's been very hard for patients to get started on medication. And for patients who have rare disease, you know, they've recently found out that they might have cancer, they might have rheumatoid arthritis, they might have hemophilia, and have a child that has hemophilia, and getting started on these drugs is extremely difficult. These new processes have been the most exciting time ever for me in specialty pharmacy over the last three years. We all know that we can order clothes and all this other stuff and they make it simple and easy. Now you can do that within specialty pharmacy. We'll get all the information to happen electronically so that um, uh, the patient, the doctor would send in the ERX to us. When we get that ERX, we can look into the EHR for getting the appropriate information that's needed, send that to pay the payer. When the payer gets it, they would approve prior authorization. Then we can make sure that the patient gets support for copay, et cetera. We'll again reach out to um, foundation support or this copay support to help those patients. And then after that, we want to monitor the patient closely and look for symptoms that are happening or issues that patient might have 
be um, having have a pharmacist always available uh, to hand, uh, handle any questions. Also, they could uh, pick it up at any CVS across the country, or they can have it delivered their home and change that any any month um, uh, they need to. And so that pathway has gotten so much better. And I believe that you know as time goes on, it's getting better and better over time. And in fact, um, you know our latest kind of what we have coming up next is sort of status. And for doctors, the biggest question that they have is around the status of the prescription. And we're making a simple, easy, easy tool that the doctor can just look in and it'll tell them the status and it prevents another, yet another call. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but there's, you know, I think like half the calls that come into the pharmacy are asking about status. The, all these tools we have will fix that, make it simpler, easier, and appropriate patients will be on the drug and we'll have the right information available quicker, sooner. So I want to say thank you so much for having me today. I very much enjoy uh, being asked to be here. It's an exciting time in specialty pharmacy as we move towards digital and giving patient uh, an easier access to these drugs. And thank you very much. And uh, joel.helly at cvshealth.com. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out. Thank you, Joel. So 86% increase in administrative burden over the past five years. That's remarkable and kind of insane and to see how much cost that's added. At the same time, you know, it's great to hear Joel talk about the digital innovations. One of the ones I've been helping with and organizations been helping with is advancing a standard through the NCPDP to remove or to make visible that information that lives in the EHR that to the specialty pharmacy that today is invisible. And we're starting to see the results of that. We're starting to see how that removes or shortens time to get the patient started on therapy, how it removes some of that administrative burden, how it um, decreases that abandonment rate. It's pretty exciting. We are hopefully at sort of a peak of growing administrative burden, which will be tamped down through these digital innovations. So before we take a break, one more quick poll question. So let's bring that up. So a little bit of a theme here. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think are the most important challenges that you just heard the speaker talk about. What are the most important challenges that we need to address as an industry? Just a few more seconds here. All right, we had a late, a late run on the uh, track clinical information and the simplifying the onboarding process, but still the uh, cost, the prior off process is the winner of this audience. And, and that's right, all of these are really important. All of these are essential. We as a network, we as an industry, we as stakeholders, and every aspect of the process need to be talking about not just prior auth, but everything we can do to shorten that journey, to remove those obstacles, to decrease the time for that patient to get to their destination. So we're gonna take a little bit of a longer break now. Hopefully you can all get some lunch or take a, take a break. Um, we will reconvene at 1.45 Eastern time and we'll hear from the payer perspective. So thanks to all of our 